In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this little string of bunting. It's worked using mainly Wittoff Milanese techniques and you'll work a 10 stick edging with a rolled edge and the bunting pennants will be worked from that down to the point and then rolled back on both sides. Each pennant takes 12 pairs of, of bobbins and the 10 stick is worked with five pairs of bobbins. In your pattern pack, you get the pattern in two sizes. The larger size, which I'm working in this video, I have worked in the little balls of DMC special dontels. Other makes of a similar thickness are available. This is 29 wraps per centimetre if you are following the thread guides. The smaller version can be worked in the Coates Cotton Ticket 50. This is about 34, 35 wraps per centimetre. So if you're looking for similar threads, you can use that as a guide. So also in the pattern, you can see that you've got the bunting on a straight string and on a swagged string. So you can extend this to make it as long as you like. I find it's a fun little pattern and it's a good way to use up some ends of threads that you've got on your lace bobbins. So let's have a little close up look at the bunting. And then we'll get on with showing you how to work it. I'm going to start by working a 10 stick edging, sometimes called a rib. It's called 10 stick because it's worked with five pairs, which is 10 bobbins. So I'm going to place a pin in the top pinhole here. And I'm going to hang all five pairs around the pin, open like a rainbow. Then I'm going to twist each pair once. Okay, so my edge will be on the bottom side and the main body of the 10 stick edging will be on, on the top side so that the, the bunting pennants will hang down from the edge. So the two left hand pairs are going to be my worker and my edge pair. So I'm going to work these two pairs in a cloth stitch and two twists. Cross twist, cross twist, twist. The one on the left hand side is going to stay there and the one on the right is going to work through my remaining pairs. So I'm going to work cloth stitch through the first two pairs. So cross twist, cross, cross, twist, cross. And then I'm going to work a turning stitch with the last pair. Now a turning stitch is five movements. Sometimes you can consider it as a half stitch followed by a cloth stitch or just do cross, twist, cross, twist, cross. So cross, twist, cross, twist, cross. What this does is it separates the pairs so that the pair here and the pair here are not with the same partner bobbins and it gives kind of a locking stitch and it's the same one that I use in a lot of braids in, in Milanese. So tension up. It's a bit wobbly on this first pin. Then I'm going to leave the outside pair behind and returning cloth stitch through the two passives with the inside pair. So cross, twist, cross, cross, twist, cross. Twist the worker twice. And then I'm going to work cloth stitch and two twists for the edge stitch. Cross, twist, 
cross, twist, twist. Pin up under both pairs in the next pin hole down. And then tension up. So I'm tensioning on my edge stitch and then holding on to my edge and my worker. I'm just going to put a little tug on the remaining passives of my rib. So again, leaving the outside pair behind, I'm going to come through cloth stitch through one, two pairs. Then I'm going to work the turning stitch, cross, twist, cross, twist, cross. Tension up. And because this is quite a, a coarse thread, I can really give it a good tug. And because it's a coarse thread, it needs a really good tug to maintain the tension. Leaving the outside pair behind, cloth stitch through the first two pairs, twist the worker twice, work my edge stitch, cloth stitch and two twists, and pin. Tension up. Give them all a nice and good tug and continue. So leaving the edge pair behind, cloth stitch through two, edge th stitch through the last pair, tension, leave that one behind, come back to the inner pair, cloth stitch through two, twist twice, Cloth stitch and two twists on the edge. Now I'm going to continue for as long as I need to in this stitch all the way along the line of bunting string. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to roll back along the edge pair. So as you can see, I've worked my 10 stick all the way along my row of bunting pennants and I've come to the end. I've decided I'm going to do seven, so I'm going to stop there. So when I've worked my last pinhole on the left hand side, I've worked out and back with my worker one more time so that it closes this pin. So I've got a, got a nice uh, firm loop to work in on this pin and I'm now going to roll back and then I'm going to tie off the the three spare pairs. So I'm going to roll back with two pairs. So that's my edge pair and my worker. And once I've started rolling back, I'm going to come back and these three pairs here, I'm just going to tie them off with a reef knot and a half. Now, if you're sewing your bunting onto a piece of fabric, you can leave the ends long and take them through to the back and sew them off. Or you can just snip those knots tight. And if, you, if you're worried they might come undone, they shouldn't. But if you're worried they are, then just the tiniest, tiniest dob of PVA. Now, I wouldn't normally recommend you put any glue or anything on your lace um, but with this it's just a little fun thing and you know you might be using it to decorate something make a card and it just means it's going to keep that and stop it from unraveling so to work my my uh, rolled edge <clears throat> i need a crochet hook so this one is a 0 0.5 four I think because this is quite a, a coarse thread so if you're using a finer thread then you'll use a finer hook and you can see here I've, I've worked a little bit close to the edge of my pillow but we're working back in the other direction so that's not going to be an issue so I'm going to turn my pillow around hopefully get it to a point where you can see it that's it and I'm going to work a rolled edge through every pinhole along here. So let's zoom in just a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take, I, you can also see that I've pushed all the pins down along, along the line. So I'm going to take the pin out of this pinhole and I'm going to put my crochet hook through it and I'm going to pick up, I'm going to go under the three threads. Well, the, these first two are kind of just hanging. So this is the very first stitch. So don't worry too much at this stage. 
but I'm going to go under the remaining thread and I'm going to pick up the partner for my worker pair and I'm going to pull it through to make a loop. Now I'm going to pass the bobbin through its own loop and then I'm going to pull up gently so that I don't get a tangle and I'm going to tension to the back of my pillow. So now I'm going to do the rolling bit and this is important that you keep that tension on that thread all the time and I'm going to bring that bobbin up and over and that rolls the knot around the rolled edge. I'm going to then take the next pin out and place that in the pin in the pinhole that I've just worked. And I'll do the next rolling thread. So I'm going to take my crochet hook through the pinhole under the edge of the work, under the three threads that form my bundle and pick up my rolling thread, bring it through the, the hole to make a loop, pass the bobbin through its own loop and tension to the back of the pillow. Keeping that tension, I'm going to roll the bobbin over to the front. You can see this is just pulling a little bit because I'm right at the very end of my work. Lift the next pin along and pop it in the hole that I've just worked. And done. I'll do a couple more. So under the bundle, pick up your rolling thread to make a loop. Pass the bobbin through its own loop and tension to the back of your work. Then roll, roll back over, keeping tension on that thread. Lift the next pin, replace it in the hole you've just worked and do the next one. So hook through under the bundle, pick up your rolling thread, make a loop. Pass the bobbin through its own loop, tension to the back of the work and keeping that tension on, roll it over. Pick up the pin, place it in the pinhole you've just worked. Now I'm, going to, <clears throat> now I'm going to carry on and I'm going to roll all the way back down to the beginning of my work. And then I'll just tie off the pairs and do the same as I did at this end, a cut them close. If when you're rolling, you find that your bobbin runs out of thread. So I've got a little bit on there, but rolling is quite hungry on thread. So if I do start getting a little low on that, all I do is I lay that bobbin down as a bundle pair, a bundle thread, and pick up another bobbin that's got more on it and carry on rolling with that. As simple as that. So I'm going to carry on rolling to the end and then when I come back I shall show you how to make the pennants. So now I've rolled the edge all the way down. One thing I should point out, um, I got halfway down rolling and I realised that I told you the wrong uh, size crochet hook. It's not a 0 0.4, this is a 0 0.6, a 0 0.4 would be finer, so I'm sorry about that. So I've used a 0 0.6 for this thread, which is the DMC Special Dontel, and if it were a finer thread, then I'd go down to a 0 0.4 or a 0 0.5 for somewhere in between. So I'm down at the end, and all I'm going to do now is I've got my two pairs and I'm just going to tie them off in a reef knot and a half so holding my bobbin so let's zoom out a little so you can see so I'm going to take right over left and under the left thread left over right under the right thread right over left and under the left thread and I shall do the same with the other pair and 
and I'm just going to trim these threads off long so that I can get the bobbins out of the way before I move on to the next section. Okay, so I'm going to tuck those out of the way. I'll deal with those later when I decide what I'm going to do with this piece of lace. Press those down and turn the pillow. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate how to make the pennant. So you need 12 pairs of bobbins. You don't need very much thread on each because it's it's just a, a tiny little section. So it's a good way to use up any, any bobbins with a bit of thread that you've got left over on them. So along the top of the pennant, I've got six pinholes. So if I count one, two, three, four, five, six. If I lift out the first pin and if I zoom in, Hopefully you can see that there are two sidebars to this pinhole and I'm going to sew a pair into each and I'm going to do that for all six pinholes across until I've got 12 pairs sewn in. So I'm going to take my hook into the hole and under the left hand bar and I'm going to bring it over the edge. So I'm literally going under the bar. I'm not working into the edge of my work. Catch my thread and pull through the hole. There we are. Then I'm going to pass one of the bobbins through that loop. So let's just zoom out so you can see that. So I'm going to pass one of the bobbins through the loop and then tension down. So I'm going to hang one pair on every sidebar going along of those six. So by sewing into the sidebars rather than the edge, it means that my work is going to sit on the back or in this case on the front, over the front of that edge. So when we turn it over at the end, you will see that um, that the pendant sits up behind it. So this is called a top or bar sewing. So I'm going to carry on and I'm going to sew in the rest of those 12 pairs. So now I've got my 12 pairs sewn in. And as you can see that I've put the pins back in the pinholes across that top row. Um, if we leave them out, there's just not enough strength. We're going to be tensioning against that. And with no pinholes there, it's going to pull that, that uh, bunting string down. And we don't want that to happen. So before I start, I'm going to put two twists on this very right hand pair which is going to be my edge pair. And then on the left hand side, I'm going to put two twists on the left hand pair and two twists on the next pair in. So the left pair will be my edge pair and the next pair in is going to be my worker. So I'm going to work eight rows in cloth stitch with a cloth stitch and two twist edge. So cloth stitch through the passives. the worker twice, cloth stitch and two twists with the edge pair and I'm going to pin up under two pairs to make a straight foot side edge. Then I'm going to come back twist twice, work my edge stitch and pin. Now I've worked two rows, I'm going to tension up and you can be quite firm. As I said earlier, this, this thread is quite a coarse thread. You can give it quite a good tug and because it's quite a coarse thread, it, it does need a bit more firm tensioning. So that's two rows. And I'm going to repeat that three more times until I've got eight rows worked. So that's our eight rows worked. Now we're ready to start reducing the pairs 
till we get to the point when we get to the point we need to have four pairs remaining so I'm going to throw out one pair of bobbins each row so when you throw out a pair of bobbins you don't want to throw the pair out in its entirety because you will end up with a rather unsightly gap so we want to take one bobbin from each of two pairs so I'm looking to remove from the middle of the row so leaving aside my two edge pairs and my worker I'm going to see which is the central pair and here we have one pair in the middle so I'm going to take the pair in the middle and the pair to the right and I'm going to lift and remove bobbins two and four so if you're counting from left to right we're going to take out two and four I'll show you why if I were to remove bobbins one and three like so you can see we've got quite a big gap here and here and that's going to be visible on the front of your work so if I lay those two back down and if I lift bobbins number two and four and lay those back can you see it lifts up and you don't get that gap so when you're laying out a pair you're going to select two pairs of bobbins and you're going to lift out bobbins two and four counting from left to right so I've laid those out and now I'm going to work along the row in cloth stitch through the remaining pairs twist twice and work my edge stitch in cloth stitch and two twists pinning up under two as before so now I'm going to tension the row and when I'm laying pairs out I'm tensioning on every single row that out and then I'm again I'm going to look for the central pairs so this time we've got two and I'm going to take number thread two and thread four and I'm going to lay them out now when I lay them back I'm laying my pairs in order if I can just zoom out so this was the first pair that I laid out this is the second pair that I laid out and I'm going to lay all my pairs out in order because when I have finished laying my pairs out, I'm going to tie those off and we don't want, jump, don't want them to be jumbled up. So now I'm going to work back across my row. tension so now I'm going to remove one pair before I work every row until I get down to the point of my bunting pennant so I'm at the bottom of my pennant now and I've got just five pairs remaining I only want four because I want to roll back with two pairs in each direction so before I go any further of the two final passives I'm going to lay back threads two and four so now we have our open end and we want to prepare this ready so that we'll roll back and we've got a nice firm point so the final passive pair I'm going to put two twists on and then I'm going to cross the two left hand pairs work them through the two right hand pairs in a half spider to secure them around the final pin so I'm going to take the second pair in and work it in two pairs of cloth stitch to the right then I'm going to go back and get the first pair and work that in two pairs in cloth stitch to the right then I'm going to tension up around that bottom pin I'm also going to lift this pin and I'm going to angle it back 
towards the bottom of the point. The reason I do this is so that when we're tensioning our rolling stitches going up either side, that gives us a nice firm base to work from. So before I start rolling back, I want to get rid of these excess threads. So I'm just going to turn the pillow around. Zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to tie off those pairs. So we'll push those pins down, get them out of the way. And as I said earlier, because I laid them out in order, these pairs will now be in the order I want them to be. And I'm just going to go along and I'm going to tie a reef knot. So right over left, then left over right. With each of those pairs that I've thrown out. You don't always need to tie um, threads that you lay back in. Uh, Milanese in cloth stitch but as this is such a very short piece of work I'm not taking any chances and you can't see it because it'll be sitting on the back of your lace so just a reef knot on each of those And then when I've tied all these off, I'm going to cut the ends long and I'm just going to twist them into a bundle and pin them to the back of the pillow. And I'll come back and uh, trim those close when I trim all my other pairs off at the end of working the pennant. So there you go. That's all my pairs cut off. And as you can see, I've just twisted them up and pinned them out of the way so that they're not in my way when I'm working my rolled edge and then I can trim them all close at the end. So I'm going to, we've got our um, half spider at the end, so it's nice and secure around the end. So I'm going to roll with two pairs this direction and two pairs in that direction. It doesn't matter which edge you start with, but it's important that you don't make your ro first rolling stitch into the tip of the the bunting pennant because there's just not it's too loose there's not enough to hold it in place so I'm going to turn to one side and starting in the next pin hole down on the right hand side here I'm going to roll back to the bottom exactly as we did before so I'm going to take out the first pin And I'm going to put my hook through the pinhole and under the edge of the work. Take it under the pairs that are going to be my rolling bundle. Hook onto my rolling thread and bring a loop back through that pinhole. Then I'm going to pass the bobbin through its own loop. Tension it to the back of my work. And keeping that tension, remember I said this is the important bit, keeping the tension on your rolling thread, I'm going to roll it up and over. Then I'm going to lift my next pin along and put it in the pin hole I've just worked before working along to do the next thread. So I'm going to roll all the way to the bottom here and then sew off into the sidebar at the base here. So now I'm at the bottom and I'm going to sew both these pairs off into this sidebar here. So I'm going to go under the bar, not under the edge of the work and pick up my thread to sew in. Now I always sew in, of the two pairs I'm going to sew in, I always sew in one of the, the bundle pairs first and I don't sew in my rolling thread until the last pair that I sew off. So if you've got more pairs in your bundle, then sew all the, all the bundle pairs off first and then the rolling thread at the end. So I'm going to tie that with a reef knot and a half and lay that back. Now 
and then into the same sidebar that's my rolling thread and again tie that in a reef knot and a half and lay that back to the back of the pillow so now we're going to come round back to the point if I turn my pillow around And we're going to roll from the other side, starting at the point, and roll the other edge of our pennant back. So because we've done the first edge, we've got a little bit more stability at this point. So now we can start rolling from this side down, and we're going to start at the pinhole at the point. So take the pin out. It is still a little bit wobbly, so you will have to be a little bit careful hook my rolling pair and bring it through you can see it's moving around a little bit I should have put those pinholes down tension it and roll it over when I put the next pin in that pinhole it'll firm it up a bit more so I'm going to Put that pinhole through, put that pin through the pinhole in the point. And again, I'm angling that pin backwards to give a bit more stability there. So if I push these pins down, and now I'm going to carry on and I'm going to roll this edge in exactly the same way. And when I get to the bottom, I shall sew in my two pairs into the sidebar of the pinhole at the base of the pennant. And that will be the pennant complete. So I've completed all my pennants. And I'll just unpin the last one and then zoom in. So you can see where we've worked the sewings into the back of the work. If I then turn over part of this, you can see the front. So because we've used those side or bar sewings, or top or bar sewing, should I say, the pennant sits just up underneath that edge. And then you have your nice little bit of bobbin lace bunting.